the open source AI ecosystem just took another big step forward. Ray, one of the most widely used distributed compute frameworks for scaling AI workloads, has officially joined the PyTorch Foundation. This move is more than collaboration, it is about unifying the open source AI stack from model training to inference to deployment. And joining me today is Luca Antiga, Chair of the Technical Advisory Council for the PyTorch Foundation and CTO at Lightning AI. Luca, before we dig into the news, for those who may not be familiar, what is Ray and why does it matter in the AI stack? Ray is an open source project uh, that is like defined as a compute engine, is a project where you can distribute computations across clusters, across different machines. So you can say, allocate something on one machine and then have it ex transferred to another machine for execution and so on. And this is what foundationally Ray is, uh, but then it enables a bunch of applications in uh, modern AI, for example, uh, inference or training or operating those reinforcement learning systems where you have a part that is doing inference, a part that is doing training and so on. So it's become one of the plumbing of modern AI. Can you talk about what drove Ray's decision to join the PyTorch Foundation and what does this partnership really mean for the broader AI community? Yeah, so Ray is a project that was started as an open source project. And like with many other open source projects, the company was born out of that, you know, that is Anyscale. And Anyscale owned the Ray project and uh, conducted it in, in open source. It did a great job at making it grow. Anyscale is a commercial offering on top of Ray. Um, at some point recently, uh, Anyscale decided to transfer uh, the ownership of the Ray project to the PyTorch Foundation. And the PyTorch Foundation is a vendor, vendor neutral space. And that means that all the assets and the ability to control the licensing and the governance falls under the PyTorch Foundation, which is a foundation within the Linux Foundation. Um, that is relenting a lot of power uh, to the foundation, to this vendor neutral space, uh, by a company like Anyscale, the goal for Anyscale, and I talked to uh, uh, their CEO, is to uh, make sure that Ray is adopted as broadly as, as it can, because of course Anyscale will uh, benefit from uh, Ray to increase its reach in the AI ecosystem. At the same time, being in the venture neutral space encourages more companies to contribute to it because I'm not contributing to the success of another company, I'm contributing to the success of common infrastructure, right? And so it's kind of, we, I'm leveling up the floor where everybody plays. And so there's a, a, a lot more uh, predisposition, predisposition from small and large enterprise um, to contribute. And also, of course, you know, uh, individual contributors. So this is the dynamic where a project like Ray becomes Common ground becomes like a collective good, and then it's placed into a vendor neutral space this way. Many developers see PyTorch and Ray as powerful but distinct technologies. How does bringing them under one foundation help create a more cohesive and scalable open source AI stack? Yeah, so recently, a few months ago, uh, the PyTorch Foundation, from a foundation that hosted PyTorch essentially, uh, decided to become an umbrella foundation. So to uh, uh, give the possibility to projects to be hosted within the foundation. And then what projects comes in and, come, uh, and, and are uh, received within the foundation is up to the governing board. And the intention of the governing board is to collect um, projects or welcome projects that are foundational projects uh, that are related either directly, for example, VLLM, is a hosted project now is VLM is a very widespread inference uh, engine uh, that uses PyTorch to for executing um, uh, LLMs uh, in, in it. So it's built out of PyTorch on top of PyTorch or it uses PyTorch internally. Uh, and Ray interacts with PyTorch. So as you say, it's not something that is built with PyTorch, but it's it's something that you use very, very often where PyTorch is used. And so it's like 
if you will, PyTorch is the power plant and, and Ray is the is the distribution, uh, right? And and you use both to create large scale systems. And this is what is what makes uh, Ray coming to the PyTorch Foundation make a lot of sense to us. As you mentioned, there are a lot of gaps that these projects are filling. From a technical perspective, what gaps does this move fill? For example, how do Ray's distributed compute capabilities enhance PyTorch's role in model training and deployment? PyTorch has PyTorch distri Torch distributed within it, right? So it can already run distributed workloads, but there are many different kinds of distribution when you, when you uh, talk about distributing workloads. Uh, there's the distributing the workload where a single model is distributed across machines, and this is not what Ray does, or it can help sending the, the, the pieces of the model around, yes, um, or uh, scheduling remote execution of, of individual function. But usually when you train a model, the cluster is managed, like the communication is managed through other primitives that are not Ray necessarily. Um, where Ray comes in is one layer up of this. Like when you have, when you need to move large amounts of data or distributed computation that targets uh, large amounts of data or orchestrate something that goes beyond the uh, single program uh, model where the, the same program is, is executed on different machines, but you need something more. You need to orchestrate more complex things. Like, for example, I was, um, uh, I was mentioning uh, uh, reinforcement learning workloads. This is like a very typical where if you train a, re a model uh, using re reinforcement learning approach, you have the model that is trained or you may have more than one. And then you have an inference engine that will produce what the model at the current state, state will produce as, as the output. And so um, that kind of orchestration is very hard to pull off without something like Ray. I mean, the fact is, as you rightly mentioned, PyTorch has grown beyond just a framework. It is now an ecosystem with multiple open source projects under one umbrella. How does that structure influence further collaborations like this with Ray? Yeah, so applying the CNCF model to the PyTorch ecosystem is something we don't necessarily want to do like um, just by copying the same model. We believe that uh, AI today is, is built with a few foundational projects, again, that you know populate uh, training inference stacks across the board. And then there's a lot of like ecosystem projects that have uh, different lifetimes and different purposes, and maybe they're built out of something that will also spun up or they built within a startup. And so we want to differentiate th these various um, planes and say hosted projects will, for the foreseeable future, be primarily dedicated to these foundational projects that constitute the floor for the industry. And these are usually very uh, project with high longevity um, and wide adoption and high degree of maturity. Then there's the ecosystem where if you enter the ecosystem, you don't have to transfer the rights to the projects to the PyTorch Foundation or the Linux Foundation. You exist as a project in the PyTorch ecosystem. You need to uh, level up to certain standards uh, that we uh, demand because uh, we want the best experience for the users. And so we want to say, okay, as PyTorch Foundation, look at this ecosystem, you will have a good time and you will find what you need in there and the, and the latest versions of PyTorch will be supported. There's work in CI. And so th there's a high quality ecosystem behind, for example, science verticals or certain industries, certain application that we can support. How this will evolve into a more CNCF-like organization, uh, we will see. Uh, we want to do it very organically. Uh, so doing it prematurely with the fast pace of AI today uh, will be a bit hard, right? Because there's something that is super hot and then in two months, people have moved on. And, and so, so we want to uh, ensure that uh, there's a certain degree, again, of longevity 
towards what we do while at the same time be at the forefront. Uh, and so we need to create some dynamics there that, that can support this kind of um, evolution, organic evolution. You mentioned that the foundation's vision is to deliver a unified open source AI computer stack. Can you share what that roadmap looks like for the next year and how the community is shaping it? Yeah, I want to clarify that the Technical Advisory Council is not holding the roadmap. The roadmap is held by individual projects and they have their own governance and the, the uh, core teams for each project uh, is the team that decides what the roadmap is. We facilitate uh, eventually gathering all the various inputs from the different participants in the community and the companies that participate to the individual projects in creating kind of more points of visibility and surfacing needs that uh, the project might have or challenges like, you know, how do you run CI? How do you do scale out CI? And there's an, an incredible amount of compute that hyperscalers are donating to projects like PyTorch to make sure that continuous integration is covered there. So yeah, this is what the uh, Technical Advisory Council does typically. So in terms of roadmap, we, Joe Spizak and I uh, from Meta uh, have uh, wrote a blog earlier this year on the PyTorch blog, where we would like to see PyTorch and the hosted project become the kind of the language of AI. And in part is already, it already is, uh, where you know we provide the building blocks across the stack uh, to uh, create AI companies, AI uh, research, and uh, this doesn't end at the framework level. It kind of pierces a, through a few stacks and uh, to a few uh, la layers of the stack. For example, uh, I was mentioning BLLM um, that is powering a lot of inference workloads out there, uh, and there may be more eventually spanning up to the agent space. Although, again, going back to longevity, the agent space is very, uh, let's say, uh, uh, in, a, in a constant evolution. And so we want to capture, we want to facilitate that, but at the same, uh, capture the foundational projects that will emerge from this Cambrian explosion of projects. There's a lot of discussions around the direction of open source AI in an increasingly proprietary world. How do you see this partnership help open source stay competitive and innovative? Yeah, so there are multiple angles for open source AI, right? One is the angle of tooling, what we're talking about here. So the building blocks, how you write a uh, program that uh, implements a large language model and how you, you know, orchestrate its training. And there's, of course, the end product, the byproduct of that, which are called the you know, open weight models or open source model. The definition of openness for a model is a lot more nuanced than it is for code because it, that involves, of course, it involves the data, the process to get there and so on. So very few models are like, like truly open source. A lot of them are open weight, which is great. And it provided a lot of uh, uh, material for the community to develop other solutions on top of those. So this is great. I think, if we talk about, like, if we see these two or maybe three um, um, layers, right? The foundational layer where PyTorch and Ray and VLLM and, and DeepSpeed are, and maybe more projects in the future. Um, and then there's the ecosystem layer where in the ecosystem, you know, they're, they're open source projects that are built Sometimes, like more often than not, because either there's a research project behind it, or because there's a company, there's a startup that um, is is fueling that open source project, and then there's the open models, and I think the combination of those, there's ample proof that the combination of those is what is pushing even the closed side of the world, right? Because the uh, model providers are trying to innovate. Uh, at the breakneck speed, not just because they want to compete amongst each other or they want to uh, win more uh, parts of the market share, but also because there's open source that is catching up really quickly. And if you think about what models did one year and six months ago uh, and what they're doing today, the progress is staggering there. And so I think that like open source is, again, leveling up 
the whole industry and it's it's it it brings table stakes right because if if you can do things for free that you you uh, maybe could do only with proprietary uh, technologies six months ago then you know the the amount of effort that needs to go in both open and and closed um to to be relevant is is uh, very high and so that's what i think also uh, makes the Python Foundation so important uh, is to provide a, a vendor neutral space where um, it's not only competition, but it's also consolidation and sharing of efforts and and uh, uh, and visions of multiple companies together. If you if you look at how many companies are in the Python Foundation collaborating there, is uh, is a very positive thing, and there's a lot of energy there. For those developers who are already using both Ray and PyTorch, but independently, what critical benefits can they expect to see as these community come closer together? So uh, a lot of enterprise and research labs are using PyTorch and Ray together okay, um, today. So they, they are very uh, integrated already. Uh, they work well together. Uh, I think the rather than integration per se, it will be organic growth. Uh, and as more companies and more organizations will be willing to contribute to a project in a vendor neutral space, I think that naturally um, uh, the amount of the volume of, of contributions and the rate of adoption will increase. And this will bring PyTorch and Ray you know, increasingly together in the same software stacks. Uh, for free and inference. So it will be rather than like imposing an integration, I think it will come very naturally from the uh, in increased contributions. Now, if you go back and talk about the foundation, what kind of contribution, projects, collaboration you would like to see as the PyTorch Foundation expands and grows? So the PyTorch Foundation, I think, will grow with foundational projects, as I said before. But the ecosystem, which is kind of a loser entity where we uh, host, uh, sorry, we collect a project that meets some quality standard that are built with the foundation you know, projects like PyTorch, Ray in the future and BLLM and so on. Um, that is where I think uh, there's a lot of opportunities for individuals without committing to transfer anything to the foundation uh, to join the ecosystem, to provide more visibility, more likelihood of contributions, and overall uh, adherence to certain um, governance standard and quality standards that will elevate the, the ecosystem itself. And so companies and individuals can submit their project to the ecosystem. Um, you can go to the GitHub organization, PyTorch-FDN ecosystem, and follow the submission process. We have very open, uh, a very open process for the admission. And if you're not admitted because you may not uh, reach uh, some standards that we have, we will provide clear guidelines to to uh, quickly meet them. And so, yeah, I hope to see the ecosystem grow quickly in the future. Luca, thanks for joining me and sharing these insights. It's clear that PyTorch and Ray coming together is more than just open source collaboration. It is about building the foundation of a unified, scalable AI infrastructure that empowers innovation across industry. Thank you for your time today. And for those watching, if you are working in AI and want to stay on top of how these technologies are evolving, make sure to check out the PyTorch Foundation and its project and don't forget to subscribe to TFR, like this video, and share it with your team. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.